So, here's where we're at. I'm re-recording this because I think I'm going to try it this way. So, red moved us from our last space there to our first encounter with uh, the talking um, space. Now, I just had a read of the uh, Board Game Geek forum where Nate posted with the rules kind of spelled out a little more uh, on this particular uh, board. So this is the separate board. This is the talking uh, game board, basically. At the start of the game, everybody starts in the middle space. Now, Nate had an example on there where people were already spread out across the board and explained it that way, um, which it made sense, but it's, it's interesting when we all start in the middle, it's something else. So we'll see what happens here. So another thing of note is that at this moment, uh, we've made a lot of strides. We flew through this area pretty fucking quick and brown, uh, I know it looks red there because of the light shining on it, but believe me, it's the, the brown player is still on a personal path, which is here. He's been going slowly because he's got a really good one where he wanted to experience as much spaces as he could. And it actually ends on a must-do action of going on to another personal path. So he's going to be hung up in there for a while. Now, according to the rules of when you're on a personal path, uh, nothing that the main players are doing uh, affects you except for sharing which is this card let me refer to that again um, a player on a personal path may share and be shared with so if we were using these cards for the sharing side of it it would still include a player on the personal path we're using this card as a talking point so from what I gather from that then, that makes him unable to participate in this particular section of the game here. So that said, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm going to go with that because that seems to make the most sense. Um, so the red player got us there, so the red player draws a card. I, I have two cards here because I've already, like I said, filmed this part and I think I made a mistake, so I'm redoing it. Red has a symbol that he has to move towards, which is a losing, uh, an awakening token. So there's an awakening token, there's an awakening spot there, there's an awakening spot there. He's got to move towards it. Since he can go directly onto one of the spaces, I guess that means he's going to go directly onto the space, right? Because if you have to move towards it and you can actually get there, I assume you have to go there. So that's what I did. I've already lost, I've already uh, taken away one of his and put it back up over, boom, over there. Um, the next part of it is, He's got to move towards another player to share this information with, basically. So it sort of symbolizes uh, a, a thought that's just popped into your head. Some sort of realization. In this case, it was a bad realization. But now he wants to share this realization with another player. Since Brown is out of it, the only other player that he can go to is Yellow. Yellow happens to be in that middle spot. And this is the part that kind of confuses me of... How do you ever get away from this middle spot? Am I now supposed to move this guy right towards him? Because it says you're supposed to move towards the player. If I move down here, it's a bonus for both of us, but is that considered towards the yellow player because we're so close together? I think there's where part of the confusion lies as far as the whole movement of this board that... Um, it just ends with everybody stacked on top of each other again because at the beginning of the game, that's how everything is said that it's supposed to start. So I'm going to say no because that just doesn't make sense and I'm going to move down here. And this is a fractal. 
Um, now, I, what I forgot to do was, uh, because I did this before, I gave red one and I gave brown one. So let's get rid of those. Um, and instead, red is now going to share this with yellow. So yellow gets one and red gets the one there. So now they've shared that information. Now, an another thing, according to Nate on the form, is that now yellow gets this card. I'm not sure why yellow would want this card. Um, I will do a little bit more reading, but apparently yellow gets this card. So I'm just going to follow what he said and give yellow that card. Yellow then picks up another card, which is this symbol, and goes through the same actions. Now again, yellow can go right to the spot that's symbolized there, where both of them would lose uh, a point on the track. And this is where it kind of just happens to be where the game is. Yellow is at the bottom there, and yellow is at the bottom there, which means yellow has to lose something else. So yellow is going to use lose one of the uh, paradoxes there. And again, Brown is out of the game. Brown is on a personal path. The only person left to talk to is Red. <laughs> he moves towards Red, which is, I guess, right on top of him. And there you have it. So now they're both together again. It's just not crystal clear. It's, it almost seems like... It almost seems like um, at the beginning of the game, everybody chooses a random spot on this little board to start on instead of everybody starts in the center because it just seems that with everybody starting in the center, you can't get anywhere. You definitely can't get to these outer edges over here. Um, it's, just, it's a little confusing still, I think. Uh, but there you have it. So there's my take on the whole thing. So before I forget, yellow and red both get one. So that's how I'm going to play it. Um, it's just that we've got quite a few more of these spots coming. There's three in a row there, so that's kind of unavoidable. There's another one up there. We haven't opened up the last part of the board yet. So yellow gets one, red gets one. And then he's talked to Red, so Red gets the card. And again, I don't know why he would get the card unless there's uh, points to add up with the amount of cards you have of those at the end of the game, too. Mm, yeah, so there's my take on it. It's, it's just not crystal clear, uh, but I'm going to leave it at that, and we'll see what that does for me as uh, we keep playing. Okay, so here's where we ended up. Um, we made it through. Uh, I did the best I could there. Um, I referred to the instructions that came with the game and the handing out of the talking card to the next player was just to symbolize that they have now been talked to. So once the turn is over, once everybody's been talked to, then the cards get discarded, which is what I did. We ran out of the deck, so I had to reshuffle. Um, and the other thing it did say was, yes, the person that's on the personal path does not take part in it. Um, so again, it, it, it seemed to work out. I think I have it sorted. Um, is it my favorite part of it? Nah, really. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, it just doesn't seem to work. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm missing something. It's it's just a part that I'm I'm not as crazy about. Um, everything else so far has been fantastic, but this particular little board I'm I'm not uh, I'm not blown away by it. So we've moved. We've made it to the spot where you have to stop. Um, Everybody's experienced it that can because like I said again, this guy has almost done his second personal path But um, he's still on a personal path. So he's missed out on a lot of activity um, Some of it may be beneficial. I'm gonna move it back because now comes the part where we open up the board one more at final time uh, So we open it this way We'll take the token off for now 
See if I can do this one-handed here. And we are on, sorry about that. We're on the final phase uh, of the game here, which looks like this. So we're on the final leg. <laughs> and then we, we end up down here uh, enlightened and ready to take on uh, the job of the shaman for the town. So, and as you can see up here, we've got a whole bunch of mantras coming up. Uh, so it's a good thing I've been buying some more of those. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all the spots that uh, we're going to deal with. I, I don't see, I mean, I'll come in at the end. Oh, here's a bunch of jewels too. I'll come in at the end and talk about the end and we'll go through the points and stuff. But until then, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's much else that's going to happen here that... Uh, you haven't already seen in the video, so um, we'll see you at the end of the game. Okay, everybody. So we had uh, this is now the next day, and we're at the end. Um, I've tallied up all the scores to see who's won. So let's have a look at what happened here. So the. Uh, paradox or the the fractals there Brown really had a rough game uh, not sure quite why that is maybe he was on I know near the end he was on a few personal paths in a row so he missed out on some bonuses that a lot of other people had um, I think he had just a hard time overall which I think I'll be able to explain in a minute uh, I'm going to show you the scores and then I have a couple of extra bits of info that I was doing wrong as I was playing that when I reread the instructions I mean with games like this it's a lot to uh, take in everything at once as far as especially when you're dealing with terminology and symbols and things like that and and just a a game that's a little more it's not quite abstract but it's it's not your run-of-the-mill world that you can kind of easily sink into which isn't a it's not a complaint and it's not a bad thing at all I, I love it for that but it does take a little bit more time I find anyway for the rules to kind of register and figuring things out so we'll start with the scores here so um, as you can see he had zero there let's uh, get one of the cards here he had nothing for the fractals. Um, I believe next was the awakening tokens. And he had none of those as well. Let me find the card here. There we go. So the fractals, zero. The awakening tokens, zero. Uh, the diamonds there, he had one and he won the time uh, just once, so he had three of those. What he did do well though was the personal path card, so that's one of the things uh, you can see there. He had five, yellow had three of them, and red had four of them, so because he had the most, that got him a few bonus points here. Uh, three extra bonus points, which are down there. Uh, yellow did a little bit better, so his total was a, a a mere eight points. Um, yellow did a little better. One, four, two, four, three of those with a total of twenty and a half. But it was it was red who really just dominated. Uh, and that extra bonus, I mean, you know, they dominated even just with the score, but the extra bonus of six because they had the most sixteen of them he had. Six, five, two, four. Uh, giving him a grand total of 36. I'm, I'm not sure what he did differently or how he played differently because he still had a fair amount of personal paths. It might have just been timing for those personal paths. When you're hitting a string of intense moments if you're on a personal path and you can avoid all that, especially if your numbers are down here, it'll definitely help. So let's get into the extra bits that I discovered. 
First, let's talk about the deep breathing token. So when you, you start out the game basically not breathing, there's the focus in there somewhere. When you turn it over, I was using it as kind of a general, whenever you were told to lose something, if I had deep breathing, I was just flipping it back. Um, you can't. The only time you use the deep breathing is when you're dealing with an intense moment and you're rolling the dice. Now, for example, let's say Red is in deep breathing mode. He's up at, what is that there, four. He's up at four. Let's say the, the intense moment is six. At any time during an intense moment, he can choose to flip over his card or his, his uh, deep breathing token and therefore bypass the whole experience. Now, by bypass the whole experience, that means no matter what the number is, he doesn't gain or lose anything. And most importantly, he also doesn't lose the position on the board. So when everybody else has finished their intense moment, if they've chosen to play, everybody goes down a cube. If red has flipped his deep breathing token over, not only does he not gain or lose, he also does not lose a position on this chart, which I think is very, that's, that's, that's a pretty major game changer there as far as I'm concerned because that was the thing that was affecting us most with all these losses um, and keeping us really low on this whole board overall was the fact that we kept having to go down. So if you can bypass, even if you are high enough that you've missed the number, if you want to save up those for later in the game and you have that deep breathing token, it's probably worth flipping it over just to save your position. And next thing you know, you're up at the 10 and you have no worries for the rest of the game. Um, even so then you don't have to concentrate on choosing deep breathing. You don't have to worry about going under because I believe the highest number on the board was six. And the dice, the highest number you can go up is plus two. So that would bring you to eight. So you'd be good for the next couple of challenges. Um, probably few challenges uh, as even when you got in this seven and eight range. So that's very important. Another very important factor that ties into that, and I don't know, I, I started editing together the videos and I watched the first part and I talked about this board and even in the video, I made a point of saying something along the lines of I should really read up on this board a little more again. I really wish I would have done that. For some reason, it was in the back of my head from most of the game, but I thought, well, if this one has this going on, I wonder what the purpose of this one is. And if I would have just taken 35 seconds to read the section, I would have noticed that this is an, an incredible side of the board as well. Again, we're just dealing with red. When we were at those points where there was, say, six, uh, let's say there was five intense moments in a row, we played a three card. What this allows us to do is move extra spaces. So we play the three, then because our token is here, we can go up to one, two, I believe it's only up to there, two, possibly three extra spaces. But this is... This little graph allows the individual player to just bump up extra spots, um, which again would have really helped in this whole gaining and loss problem that we kept getting into if we could have just utilized this and gone those extra spaces to bypass all those intense moments and maybe land on a spot that was a benefit to us. Um, so again, that's more about like navigating your trip a little better, right? Like avoiding avoiding the bad the bad vibes and uh, just carrying on keep on keeping on uh, so those were two really important bits or three I guess uh, three really important bits again that would have I mean it, it definitely cuts out sometimes where you can avoid losing stuff but overall I think the benefit far outweighs that when it comes to dealing with these charts here um, there was one more thing, but I'm remiss to remember what it was exactly. Um, 
while I kind of browse through though, the the overall game was fantastic. I found it rushed for me near the end, and that was more of the fact of uh, special sexy lady friend was coming home from work, um, wanting to kind of get dinner, clean up the table, get things prepared for our evening. Um, but I think when I reached that, and also when I reached that final phase, I was kind of, I was just kind of ready to complete it. You know, there didn't seem like that last piece of the board there. There was, there was much that was going to happen that would be um, new or worrisome, except for the last few spaces. On the last few spaces of the board, there's moments that you have to there's a series of moments that you have to play um, that kind of shook things up a little bit as well too. But overall, I thought it was a fantastic, fantastic game. I, as you saw in the video about the halfway point when we just passed all the shamans, uh, the uh, the mantras. I mean. That whole phase again was just, I just felt really in sync with the game at that moment and it really, just really worked for me. Uh, really, really enjoyed that part of it quite a bit. And again, we'll just go back to the talking board. Just not my favorite part of it. I, I think next time I play, I might try to deal with it a little bit differently. Maybe not, I, I'm, I also might have misread between the two groups of instructions for it in the book and online. I might just, instead of going to talk to somebody and going towards them, just move anywhere. Because I, I think that separation, excuse me, that separation really helps as far as keeping things flow and, and feel like you're actually achieving something. Because I think maybe at the end of the day it, it didn't feel like we were actually getting stuff or this was actually going to be of any benefit to us. Um, yeah, I'm just not, not as crazy about this particular part of it. Everything else was great. I absolutely love the personal paths. Those were a lot of fun. And oh, the other one was that. That's what it was. It was about the personal paths. Everybody has their character card. And from what I understand, if you use your character card and that character card allows you to get to a personal path, you have to take the personal path space. You can't use it to bypass it. So if it's if you're using this after the jelly and you're using it as a three and that three takes you one past where a personal path is, you have to change your route and go and do the do the personal path. So that's interesting. Um, that wouldn't be so much of a concern for any games that I would play because the way I, again, the way I felt about those personal paths, uh, my choice would be to take them regardless of using that card or not. Uh, I would be taking personal paths the whole game if I could. Uh, really, really fun part of it. And I believe those were the things. So yeah. 100% really, really great game. Uh, highly, highly recommended. Thanks very much for watching my uh, gameplay video and review of uh, the Mushroom Eaters. And I would suggest that everybody go and buy the game. Uh, and the gameplay video is in the description. I'll make sure that I leave a link for the website where you can buy the game. Uh, check it out, check out the trailers, check out the Cave Evil trailer. I hope to be doing, I hope that uh, I can get Cave Evil into my grubby little hands in the next month or so. That's the, the next one to save up and then I'll do this all over again for that game. And we'll play that, maybe I'll get Mr. Tom involved and we can do a little two-person uh, game of that. Okay, thanks.